Walking numbs the mind. You've been walking for a very long time. You can barely remember the time before. Images flash through your mind. You remember the sound of gunfire and bombs exploding. Your house, torn apart, and ruins of the city. The war that changed everything. You remember the scavenging buildings for a while, and leaving in search of other humans still alive. Hunting, foraging, praying to the stars that some trace of civilization remained on Earth. How long has it been since you ran away? At least a few years. You remember winters and summers. But how many? You have no idea anymore. Walking aimlessly didn't get you very far. Dangerous robots roam the land, and you have to hide at a moment's notice. Food is scarce, and hunting is even harder on an empty stomach. Still, you have to walk. There must be some humans remaining somewhere. You're just going to take a quick nap. You'll walk tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's a good compromise. You choose to fall to the ground. You come to your senses. The smell of something being cooked sharp in your mind instantly, and you jump awake. You are inside a wooden building, on a bed. You're not sure who saved you, but you're hungry. You look around and find yourself in a small room, without a door, but with stairs leading down to a place where the smell comes from. There, you find an old man dressed in extravagant clothing, stirring a pot. He notices you, and smiles. Greetings. I am the Bard. You must be starving. You were almost dead when I found you, and you've almost slept for a week. Here, take a plate. The Bard explains that he was on a trip when he found you, and brought you back to his home, the town of Harmonium Point. You take a few bits of the warmest food you've seen in years, and it tastes wonderful. Your leg is hurting a lot, and your host insists you stay at least a week in your bed to recover. He'll provide food and medical supplies for free. Harmonium Point is a city founded on principles of helping each other and surviving together. Here, there is no money or hierarchy, everyone cooperates with each other to survive and rebuild what has been lost. But he'll have all the time in the world to tell you about it later for now, he insists that you return upstairs and sleep a bit more. The next morning as you wake up the house is empty, but the bard left a couple sticky notes. You spend almost a week drifting in and out of consciousness. One day, as you come back to your senses, you notice that the bard is home, and he isn't alone, with him is a very familiar face. Hey, uh, Elsie's L. Didn't think we'd ever meet again, did you? Sitting nonchalantly in the living room is your childhood friend, Anaset. Memories of both of you playing pranks to each other and running in the streets come back to you as you stare at him, the sparkle of mischief still in his eyes. As you can see, I've survived the cataclysm, and luckily, I found Harmonium Point soon after, the bard was kind enough to let me in and give me small jobs, and long story short I've been here for a few years now. We have some catch-up to do, don't we? The bud lets you have a your moment, then intervenes. I'll have you know, I am never alone whenever I do my duty. I can count pretty much everyone in this town as a close friend, and I never hesitate to ask for help when I need it. To keep track of all the people I've met, I use what I call a buddy book, a place where I scribbled important things about people, where to find them, what they're good at and so on. And I just so happen to have a blank copy. You asked, like a phone book, right? Kind of, yes. You look at the book he's offering you, then at him. Come on. Open it up. And then, to celebrate your reunion, some music and some drinks. The bard grabs a nearby mandolin while Anaset brings back a few glasses from the kitchen. Anaset looks at the bard, then asks, By the way, you still haven't prepared the chairs in your study room. You want me to have a look at it? Ah, about that. I was meaning to ask you about it, Luzzle. I'm gonna have to leave for two weeks, you think you could manage to repair the chairs while I'm gone? You've been feeling a bit better and repairing a few chairs would be a good start to repair your savior. You agree on the spot? Cool ad Anaset, let's do it together then. Tomorrow, use the buddy book to have us team up and we'll start by searching for supplies, here's your drink. The night quickly devolved into a small party, and you fell asleep soon after. Thank you.
You and Anna set me up to talk about the chair repairs. Well, we're going to need wood, screws, tools. Actually, we're going to need a lot of different things, says Anna set. You know where the bard keeps his supplies. He continues. You do not. I would suggest going to the nearby forest and finding what we need there, but I'm not sure going out in your state is reasonable. Let's see what we can find inside. You both search the house until you find an old and rusty door with a supplies sign on it. You try to open it, but it's locked. Sounds like a problem to solve. Every problem has a few different methods to solve it, but the methods that make the most sense are more likely to possible, but it's still made of metal so it will be very hard. The lock isn't great, so lock picking it shouldn't be too difficult. Course. Well, I'm quite sure the key isn't too far, but it's the bard's house we're talking about, it's a chaotic mess, and probably not the best option. To clarify things, breaking the door is a strength option. Lock picking is dexterity based, and searching the key is perception based. But since our abilities are average, it's important to select the option that seems the easiest. You decided to pick the lock. You pick the lock and hear the door open with a metallic click. Anna set nods in a serious way. Nice work, my friend. It was the easiest way of doing things, but it wasn't certain you would manage to do it. Even with the correct choices, sometimes you're just unlucky. And some tasks are simply harder than others, correct choice or not. If you ever fail at something, try to see if it's worth trying a second time, using another option, or waiting a few weeks until you've increased your abilities. The more of a certain skill your team have, the higher your chances choosing the right way of doing things is worth more than a few points in a skill. During the next week you wake up one day to find a bard sitting downstairs on one of the new and improved chairs. I can see that you're done fixing the chairs. Good. You might have noticed little sun icons on the bottom right corner of the furniture sheet. Those are used to manage the upkeep level of the house. Upkeep is a way to measure how many pieces of furniture you can keep in shape at the same time, as well as electricity and water. Basically, some pieces of furniture require a lot of upkeep to stay functional, especially as you keep upgrading them, and others don't. Note that this isn't a cost. Upkeep allocated to a piece of furniture won't be consumed, and it won't consume resources or anything. That being said, you can choose how you allocate your upkeep. Imagine that you've got a piece of furniture that requires one point of upkeep per level. You've upgraded it all the way to level 3, but you've only got two points of upkeep. Well, you can still use your two points of upkeep to use it, but it will only give a part of the possible bonuses. It can get complicated, so that's why I never really bothered upgrading much of the house. 
bit since he did a good job is repairing the chair, why not have a look? There are a few things that could use an upgrade, like the garden. When you'll do, you'll understand what I mean about the upkeep system. You recovered well this past month. I think it's safe to have a look outside. Come back to the quest board when you're done and I'll give you a tour of the place. I'm sure you're gonna love it. You and the Bard have talk while touring the city. He explains that Harmonium Point is based on trust and community work. There is no money, three hunters, and the loot with the rest of the town who provides walls, houses and other benefits. Everyone is welcomed, but if one tries to steal from others and not do their job, one standing in the town decreases, and one ends up expelled. You seem like a decent folk, so I'd like to offer you to live here, he continues. I can help you set, just tell me what you're going to need. Since you almost died out there, staying is a good idea. But what should you ask for? Having people get a good first impression of me seems the most important. The bard smiles and assures the conversation turns to the creation of the town and what happened in the past years. You don't look at old. I know it's not something that helps in your everyday life, but do you have any memories from before the cataclysm? We used to be a mighty society, able to talk to each other across the globe and reach for the stars. Thanks to the biomass-eating robotic monstrosities known as gardeners, commodities such as water, food and plastics were churned out automatically, humanity's comfort was left in the hands of robots. And what could possibly go wrong with that, right? He chuckles. Well, as fate would have it, the gardeners ate so much that the earth started deteriorating. A war broke out between those who wanted to save the earth and those who wanted to leave it and find a new home in the stars. We're on Earth, so you can imagine which idea won over the other one. Once the war was over, I didn't have anywhere to go, so I gathered a few friends and created Harmonium Point, a city where we could try to build a life that doesn't destroy the planet. No industrialization, no trading, and, of course, no robots trying to eat up everything. And that's how, several years later, I became a bud. The guild I founded is known to gather Harmonium Point's finest troubleshooters. You resume touring the city for the day, and a few more days after. There is certainly something weird yet beautiful in the architecture, a mix of wood and metal, with home gardens and medicinal plants, yet microwaves and free airs. Discovery after discovery, the rest of the week goes by in a blur.